Roxo Media House. Yeah, yeah. I have stuff popping up on my phone saying like a year ago today, and I'm like, wow, time flies, especially when you're having fun. I mean, this is such a special place, and uh, never in my wildest dreams got the magic being here with the coaching staff and the strength staff like this. And uh, just so blessed and humbled to be here. It's just, you know, always brings a smile to my face. Even when, you know, I'm having some mental battles or some tough days, I'm just kind of got to sit back and reflect, like, wow, like, I'm so lucky I could end up at school who knows in West Texas like El Paso or something same thing and it wouldn't have been you know nice city coaches all that but yeah something like that for sure this is Frogs Today Daily and here's your host the voice of the frogs Brian Estridge Frogs Today Daily starts right now here from the indoor practice facility, the Sam Baugh Indoor Facility here at TCU. Day three is in the books now for TCU as far as spring practice is concerned. A little shorter practice here today because the Frogs are going to go back-to-back with tomorrow being another day for TCU tomorrow morning here on the Saturday. Uh, after that, they've got a great youth clinic that you want to be a part of. You can find out more online for that one. Then after that, tomorrow, uh, the Horn Frogs will be hosting some former players, uh, TCU alumni as far as football. Football is concerned, and their families uh, here for lunch as well. As you can see behind me, got a couple of Horn Frogs who are in town getting ready for Pro Day, which will happen next Thursday. We'll be broadcasting from Pro Day here as part of our Frogs Today Daily. All right, let's get into what happened on day three now as far as spring practice is concerned. Install day continues for both offense and defense. Starting to see some of the younger guys step up for the Horn Frogs and new faces as well, both on offense and defense. Uh, we'll spend some time tomorrow specifically talking with Joe Gillespie, the Frog defensive coordinator, about that install process, which he told us earlier today, a little quicker than last year here already in day three. He's so much further along than he was last year with this new install of the defense. Now, now that doesn't mean some of the young guys aren't struggling to catch up with it. We'll find out about that with Joe Gillespie coming up. Also here today, a lot of recruits in town, a lot of folks watching this practice in the indoor practice facility due to weather concerns on the outside. Frogs took it inside here to Sam Baugh's indoor facility. All right, uh, after practice, we got to hear from uh, one new face and a couple of veterans, all right? JoJo Earl, the great wide receiver for the Horn Frogs who originally went to Alabama out of Alito, now back in town in Fort Worth. He was the first to the podium, and we asked him what it was about TCU that made him want to come back here to Fort Worth. Uh, I, honestly, I, TCU's always been like a school that I wanted to come to. I was going to commit out of high school, but... I had people in my ear, so uh, it's always been a, a huge decision for me to come to TCU. I just, this time I, I jumped to it. That's JoJo Earl, the frog wide receiver. Johnny Hodges also joined us today. The transfer from Navy, of course, who had a great year last year at linebacker for TCU. You know, that was one area of concern toward the end of the year last year. Depth at linebacker. Frogs are going to have a couple of guys back this year. Made a change as well, moving Namdi Obiozar, Obiazar, I should say, uh, down to linebacker from the defensive backfield. Good thing there is he's had a chance to see that linebacking core in front of him for the last year instead of moving back. Backwards, it's a little a little more difficult. Well, we talked to Johnny Hodges about uh, Namdi and how he's adjusted to that new linebacker role now. Oh, it's been great. It's been great. I mean, he's a little green. He's raw. He's coming from safety. But just his athleticism, it's incredible seeing that at the linebacker spot. We already knew he could hit because he's come down and made tackles at safety. But putting him in the box, letting him, you know, show off his athleticism against linemen, it's been really special to watch. And we're really happy to have him in there. I know I am, too. Dio's a great player and just such a good guy and such a good friend. But, uh, you know, future's bright. We have a bunch of guys who can, you know, ease into that gap. Same with Trey. Same with D. Hort. Those guys are great players. Going to be playing at the next level, hopefully, for a really long time. But we've got some young guys that are, you know, they, know they have big shoes to fill. And uh, so far, they're looking to fill those. I like it. In addition to his talk about the linebacker play so far, he reflected back to Johnny Hodges on last season and how that finish has made this team better. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for those who are coming back, like, um, we just know what it takes. You know what I mean? You know what it takes when you play the best team. Uh, when we played Georgia, just felt like they had, you know, more people on the field. They're playing at a, bit, a faster level, a faster speed, and uh, we all know what we have to do to get there. Because obviously we want to be as good as them, not just for team-wise, but selfishly, individually, so you can get to the next level. So just with the, that, that in the back of our mind, it's motivated us, you know, in workouts to get faster, all that stuff, football, get better at football, all, all that. So it was a really nice experience uh, being there. And then, yeah, still heavy in our minds. 
Uh, I mean, I'm, we're on the positives too. I mean, we had a great year. We had a fun time, but uh, I just know myself and I'm kind of like, you know, never really content with things. And I know I have to get a lot better. So the, the end of the season kind of left a foul taste in our mouth. That's Frog linebacker Johnny Hodges, now the leader of this TCU defense. Coming up next here on Frogs Today Daily, we'll hear from the quarterback. Chandler Morris joins us next when we continue. Plus, we'll talk to one of these former Frogs headed off to the NFL. We'll do that with Amari DiMicardo. It's Frogs Today Daily continues after this timeout. At Higginbotham, we put people first. So we simply start by listening to you. Whether you're searching for customized insurance, HR, or financial solutions to protect your home, car, health, business, or employees, our specialists are here to serve you, the people you care about, and your success. Higginbotham, insurance, HR, and financial services, inspired by you. Texas-based Happy Water offers the best-tasting, sugar-free kids' drink ever made. Happy Water comes in four delicious flavors that you can find at local retailers and on Amazon. Each pouch contains zero grams of sugar, zero calories, and zero percent juice. Head to happydrinks.com for more information and to purchase Happy Water. That's H-A-P-I drinks.com. Live happy. Be happy. Drink happy. The Flying Tea Club provides the everyday TCU fan and alum the ability to specifically support TCU student-athletes. Flying Tea Club offers three levels of memberships. The Flying Tea Club is a nonprofit organization supporting the brand development of TCU student-athletes through a series of unique event-based networking opportunities, which are exclusive to our members. These events provide a great social engagement tool for our members and student-athletes alike. Follow them on Instagram at Flying Tea Club or online at flyingteaclub.com. Welcome back into Frogs Today Daily here at Sam Baugh Indoor Practice Facility. It's the Horn Frogs now after day three of spring ball. Get ready for tomorrow, day four. They'll go back-to-back days now, as we mentioned, then the youth clinic afterwards. After this practice, day three, Chandler Morris, the frog quarterback, had an opportunity to meet with the media for the first time. And we started with a question about last year. Obviously, he was a starter heading into the Colorado game, gets injured. Max comes in, made the most of it. How did Chandler handle that situation? Interesting answer here from the front quarterback. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, last year getting the starting job and then uh, three quarters in, you get hurt, and uh, Max uh, takes the opportunity and runs with it. Um, I mean, it was, it was definitely difficult for the first couple of weeks. Um, as a competitor, you want to play. Uh, so that was that was very difficult. I kind of thought that all right, it's my time. It's uh, it's time to that I'm I'm going to get to uh, show the world what I'm about. We also ask him how he prepared last year. There as the number two, what did he learn from that experience? I learned a lot of valuable lessons. I learned some lessons that I don't. I'm not even sure if I know I learned them yet uh, until I get to this season. Um, and then uh, really the the Jalen Hurt story really kind of impacted me. It really uh brought a lot of hope for me uh, during the season. Um, and then obviously I had to be the, the best teammate I could be. Um, I took a lot of pride in that. And uh, just like Max did when he lost the job, he was the, he said he wants to be the best backup quarterback in the country. So my, my mindset shifted to that. Um, so, and then this season, um, it really, it brings a different hunger. Um, I'm really, the, I thought last year was the most driven I'd been. Um, and then I got to this off season and it, it's really, uh, it's it's this year. I mean, I've never been so driven, uh, so hungry to just get out there um, and just, just show uh, all the stuff that I've been doing uh, in the dark. Um, every single game I'm on the sideline, I was taking mental reps. Uh, I was going through uh, seeing the same thing that Max is seeing, uh, making decisions that I was going to make. Um, and uh, he, uh, he really, learning from him, I, I took away, you got you to gotta throw it in the flats, throw it in your check down. You can't go out there and um, sure, I like to be a gunslinger, and I, I feel I can make every, any throw on the field at any time. Um, but sometimes throwing it, uh, throwing it behind the line of scrimmage and letting your running back go make eight yards for you, is uh, that's a win. Uh, so I really learned that from him. I really feel like I've grown up in that aspect, um, and i, I got to continue to prove it. You know, much like Johnny Hodges mentioned earlier, this team better off after experiencing last year. In fact, uh, we asked him, Chandler Morris, about the approach of this year's group to this season. I think it's kind of more professional this year. Uh, really, the guys coming back, we've kind of we've set that standard. 
um, and that, uh, that we're not here to just mess around. Like this is, we're not here to uh, be happy to be there, kind of. We're, we're expecting to be there in that situation. Um, and uh, that's kind of, that's got to be the motto around the locker room. And these uh, new guys coming in, uh, kind of just putting that on them, engraving that in their heads about uh, just, just our professionalism that we have here. Um, and it's, I think we're just more mature. That's Chandler Morris, the Frog quarterback, in the interview room today after practice number three. Now, we mentioned earlier uh, that there were Frogs out here, former Frogs, getting ready for Pro Day. That's next Thursday. We'll have all of that for you here at Frogs Today Daily. We had a chance to catch up with Amari DiMicardo, the Frog running back, obviously, who had that great game against Michigan, the California native, was able to play at SoFi just down the street from his home for that national championship game. Amari, talk to us about his preparation now here in the offseason. Exciting time, you know, uh, just been training these uh, long three months, been a long three months, so just excited to get out here and show what we can do. Give me some sense as to what you are hearing from teams, if anything. Is there any interaction between your people and, and NFL scouts? Uh, as far as right now, it's not really much talk, you know, uh, Maybe like some late round stuff, but I think after pro day will pick up. Yeah, that's when it starts to show out for you. So at this stage, uh, obviously we we know how you excelled academically. Now are you kind of focused in, zoned in on training for football right now? Yeah, definitely. Just all uh, all my eggs in one basket right now. You know, I've already got my degree, so I have something to fall back on. So just all in with this. Yeah, got your degrees. <laughs> we need to make sure we say that in a plural way. Uh, and, and and give me some sense also as to how TCU welcomes you guys back for not only Pro Day next Thursday, but here you see guys still training in the uh, indoor. Give me some sense as to how that works. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. You know, just it's like open arms all the time. You know, we come around and joke with the coaches, you know. And it's a different dynamic now because now we're not here anymore. So you get to really – had that person-to-person -person interaction with, like, the strength coaches and stuff. It's not as serious. So it's real fun. Have you allowed yourself to sneak a peek at uh, the three days of uh, spring practice at all? Have you seen any of it? I haven't, but I'll be here tomorrow. Okay. For that first uh, scrimmage, I'll be here. Yeah. <laughs> Give, uh, how about uh, that last game? When did Amari get over that last game? Uh, I wouldn't even say I'm over it now, you know. Yeah. Just kind of that sting feeling, but I know – just the fact that we made it there is something yeah. I could take with me for the rest of my life. Yeah. Don't you have to kind of focus on the positive and the fact that, hey, this is a team that rolled off 12 straight wins, right. that, that had the success, that beat Michigan. Yeah. You had your best game as a Horned Frog maybe against Michigan. I mean, that says something, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. I think it's, like you said, something remarkable, something we'll all remember for the rest of our lives. And uh, going down in history, you know, nobody ever thought we'd make it to the championship, first Big 12 team, so it's something crazy. That's Amari DiMicardo, one of our favorites. Look forward to visiting with him in the future. Look forward to what the NFL future is like for Amari DiMicardo. Okay, coming up tomorrow on Saturday, it's a focus on the TCU defense. It'll be practice number four. Joe Gillespie, the Frog defensive coordinator, will join us, will join us uh, post-practice, and we'll be here to bring all of that action for you here at Frogs Today Daily. For our entire crew, thanks for joining us here on this edition of Frogs Today Daily. Have a great day. Roxo Media House.